During the summer, the team suffered a huge setback when a sponsorship deal worth a potential £40 million pounds fell through. Some agreement we, you know, and they were going to be title sponsors. Fantastic. On the 16th of July, one of the biggest disappointments of my life commercially, I got a very short fax to say that they were withdrawing their commitment. And uh, it was a real hit in the tummy because there had been a handshake involved. But it was very difficult at that late date to go back and get a title sponsor. And I don't expect you to, to answer the question. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm feeling. I had no illusions that it was going to be a difficult time uh, and an enormous challenge. You know, what do you I do? didn't think it was going to be easy. Nothing that I've ever done in my life that's been any good has been easy. Somebody's got to do something at that end. I thought that um, because of uh, Jackie leaving the world of motor racing a long time ago, he was, he's 57 years of age, and to be hopefully settling down, not in the sense it would sit by the fire and knit or have a chat every night, but to go more and uh, have holidays and to play golf and enjoy life, really. But if Hattie broached the subject and I knew what I know now, I'd have said, forget it. <laughs> At Cosworth, the development of the ZTEC RV10 engine was ongoing. A disappointing 96 season for the Sauber team had led to press speculation that the engine might be as much as 60 horsepower down on the competition. Ford's director of European motorsport is philosophical. I think to a certain degree Ford and Cosworth are victims of their own success in the past and I think people imagined that uh, producing a V10 it would be extremely successful out of the box. Um, and we're constantly looking at new ways in which we can achieve uh, better power figures, um, better performance from the engine. And again, I think there's a, there's a role that Ford can play in that, which we perhaps haven't played in the past. Yeah. So, so half an hour more, so give us an hour, that gives us an hour and a half. That should be fine, yeah. At 31, okay, Paul Stewart fine. was coming to terms with being that's the youngest fine. managing director right. in F1. Yes. What was that, James? Well, to be brutally honest about it, uh, I'm quite sure the perception is that if I hadn't been Jackie Stewart's son, I wouldn't have been managing director of, of Stewart Grand Prix. Um, and, and that's, <laughs> sure, that's probably true. I've still got a lot to learn uh, because I didn't have this experience before. I'd, I'd never seen a wind tunnel model before. Um, so trying to make judgments on things that I hadn't seen or understood was very difficult. I had to rely on the people I was working with. I feel that I've seen Paul grow in stature during the course of the last 12 months. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he's the person who's really driven this. Um, and if it hadn't been for Paul, we probably wouldn't be in the position that we're in now. manufacture of key components continued. Relying on the black art of magnesium casting, the construction of the twin-walled gearbox was to prove problematic. Only after seven attempts was a usable case produced. The search for sponsors around the world had finally led back to London and the headquarters of HSBC, a major financial services institution. Wonderful. Want your own pen, Jackie? After a tough presentation to the 22-strong board, Stewart had extracted a financial commitment worth some £25 million over five years. And uh, we expect you to deliver, of course. Well, we'll be trying to <laughs> <our best. laughs> And you, Paul. Why did I say you? Might be too early in the week to get all the right people along. Yeah, Monday's With about just one fifth of the required budget now in place, the team was under pressure to confirm a launch date in early December. You'll get nobody. Okay, let's. You know, you do. You do Friday the sixth. You do the the, 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 the launch. You won't get them. Why is that? 
Because Paul, people go out, they go out to the country, they go skiing, they go to, you know, they're starting to get their Christmas houses set up, they're, 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 they're you know, they're just people shoot. Okay, well that's fine, but it's not a weekend, it's Friday and then... I'm only trying to tell you what is a reality. Really? Right. That's what I'm saying, they won't like a Friday. But it'll be a Friday, what else do they do on a Friday? Friday morning, what do they do on a Friday morning? Paul, oh, don't ask me what they do, because I can't tell you. What I'm telling you is you don't do things on Fridays. But Friday morning or Friday night? Not Friday Fridays. Days. Just don't do it on a Friday, Correct. okay. Throughout the summer, the Formula One rumor mill had been in overdrive with the news that Damon Hill, the championship leader, would lose his drive with Williams for the 97 season. For Stuart Ford, the possibility of signing the likely world champion was too good to miss. I had known his father very well, and he was really one of my best friends while I was his number two at BRM. So I was kind of sorry in a few areas that, it, that David wasn't able to come with us. The decision it had to be based on what I felt was right, not on any emotional uh, choice, and having known the Stuarts for a long time, or rather the Stuarts having known me as a, as a little boy even, the, um, uh, that really had no bearing or couldn't, ha couldn't have a bearing on where I uh, finally decided to go. When he finally decided to go to the Arrows team, I was disappointed because I just think it would have been a kind of perfect match, really. You know, if you're into Formula One, then somehow or other, people tend to drift back, and Jackie's done that. He's drifted back into Formula One, and now he's going to be running his team. And uh, I wish him all the best, uh, but I hope we whip his ass. I wouldn't expect anything less of Damon to want to do just that. Whether he's capable of doing it, of course, is an entirely different matter. I think to have had the world champion um, joining a new team would have really set us up for potentially just too much pressure in our first year of racing. But nonetheless, it was a good experience for us as a company to go through that exercise of saying, let's go for it. And I think, and people knew what we were doing in the company. And I think it got everyone's attention saying, they're serious about the future. You know, they're not messing around. Having failed to sign Hill, the team's next move was to sign a young Danish protege of Paul Stewart Racing. Well, I can't sign those things. Well, you're not going to sign anything. Jan Magnussen was always high on the list because we had come through the staircase of talent and we recognised to be such an outstanding driver. Look happy with your acquisition? I'm very happy. Very happy. Right, can I tell you, you don't put your hands like oh, that. Oh, sorry, what do you want to do? No, that's better. No, I tell you, no, never, never do that. No, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Jan, as a driver we always had in mind, we were so impressed with him when he drove for us in 1994 in Formula 3 and won... Um, 15 out of 18 races that particular year, which is quite a standing record. It's not often you see somebody coming along and racing, you think he could be really good, uh, like a Schumacher, for example. I don't think there would be as much pressure on me here as there would in a, uh, say, a McLaren situation or a Jordan situation. I think um, I can develop myself here in a much uh, calmer way. All we need now is you for, to perform. <laughs> Specialised manufacturer Extract supply gearboxes to the entire Formula One grid, bar Ferrari and Jordan. With 450 parts made from purified steel, titanium and magnesium, this is one of the most vulnerable areas of the car. Each box costs around £45,000 and it's likely that eight or nine will be used in a season. Testing of the gearbox is critical. In a typical race on the Monaco street circuit, a driver can expect to make up to 3,000 gear changes. With Magnussen already signed, there was unfinished business to resolve. The only other issue was Ford's thoughts as far as the name of the second driver was concerned. Well, the three that are the that are really on the market, that are current drivers that would fit what we're looking for as an experienced driver that can help the team would be uh, Martin Brundle, Jos Verstappen and Rubens Barrichello. I, suppo I suppose from a, from a purely selfish aspect I'd, I'd prefer to see Brundle in the car. Um, I think he'd be better for us in terms of his, uh, 
in terms of his overall image and his presentation mm. and the fact that he's the sort of guy that you can roll out with senior management at any at any stage in the proceedings um, and you know that he's not going to let you down. Mm. Having said that, I got the impression you were perhaps beginning to lean towards Barrichello. I don't think we could ever have hoped to get a driver of Ruben Barrichello's calibre when we launched the team at the beginning of the year. Rubens Barrichello is 24, but he's been in racing for four years in Formula One, so he's very experienced with more than one F1 race car and more than one F1 engine. 